here in my garage got all these expensive tools here that cost a lot of money miter saws, table saws, you name it but you know what I love more than expensive tools? knowledge because without knowledge you wouldn't even know how or where to use these expensive tools and what applications so I have books several books on finish and trim carpentry to show me exactly what to do and how to use these tools. I'll take the tools. But no, seriously, welcome back to the channel. I was, that was just a spoof on Ty Lopez, if any of y'all have seen that video. If not, then I guess you won't get the joke. But anyways, I've got Vince from VCG Construction here behind me. And we've been hanging out all weekend. He was nice enough to fly out from Philadelphia to hang out with me. And we've been talking tools, mostly talking jobs, just being in the trade as contractors. And his business is actually much bigger than mine, so I'm learning a lot from him. But on his channel, because these tools are expensive, I mean, this stuff adds up very quickly. On his channel though, they kind of specialize in like finding the best deals, Home Depot live streams, all that kind of stuff. So what kind of stuff do you guys mostly focus on as far as your channel? First, I want to say thank you for having us out here, Richard. It was a great time. Thanks for inviting us, number one. Number two, the channel, the viewership, the very cool gang is made up of tradespeople, DIYers, people just like you. And I think that's why me and Richard get along so well because our viewership, they're very similar. And beings that they're similar, I'm sure that you're all interested in finding good quality tools because they're expensive, but getting them at a good price. And it seems like our viewership has a, a knack for doing that. They message me, tell me about tool deals that are going on, then we publish videos and disseminate the information. How you can get these tools that are very, very expensive that allow you to make a living but get them at a reasonable price. It's awesome, it's community people helping each other. And that's the way it should be. So there you have it. Definitely go check out VCG Construction. Definitely subscribe if you want some good tool deals. And they also do Tool Test Raw, where they battle DeWalt versus Milwaukee, Cobalt versus Rigid, and all that stuff. And they get down and dirty with the specs, far beyond anything I know. But I really enjoy their channel and I'm glad. Vince came out and we can talk tools. But in this video, I'm just gonna run you guys through all of my power tools. I'm not gonna get into all my little jigs and little accessories, but all of my power tools, I'll go over them with you, what I use them for, what I like about some of them, what I don't like about some of them. But don't get us wrong, it's not like you need expensive tools to make a living and be in the trades, but these are the tools that I like to use and unfortunately, they are very expensive. So look, we'll go over them and um, I'll tell you what I like and don't like about them. So we'll start with the bread and butter of what I do and that's gonna be the miter saw. I learned how to do this trade on a DeWalt 12 inch miter saw. The one I learned on was not a slider but I've soon learned that I need a slider to cut bigger capacity materials. What I like about this saw is that it's a 12 inch, my favorite kind of a finish saw for bigger moldings. It slides, 12 inch sliding miter saw. And this one has um, an aftermarket fence that was made by Custom Fabricating Solutions, their American company. They sent me this fence to test out and it's been over a year since they sent it to me. So I like it a lot. It hasn't left the miter saw since then. And that bigger fence allows me to cut bigger capacity materials. But overall this miter saw is super true. I don't have to do much calibration to it. It stays pretty true. I keep it in the back seat of my truck so it doesn't get bumped around and tossed in the bed of the truck. But it's a basic miter saw. Big plus on this one, this is the flex bolt. So it is compatible with the, um, the flex bolt batteries. But right now I have the, um, the AC adapter in it. And this just comes off and then you can replace the batteries with that. It's overall a good saw. I have no complaints with it. You can't go, if you buy this saw, it's gonna be able to do everything you need. It will not be limited 
at all. It slides, it bevels, it's good to go. But for my smaller stuff, I'm gonna use this Milwaukee. Overall, this is probably my favorite miter saw. It's almost an exact replica of that one, but smaller. But it just feels so compact and tight, obviously, because it's smaller. But one thing about this one that I don't really like is that it doesn't have the option to have an AC adapter. So it's either battery or nothing. So once the battery dies, there could be some downtime there if you don't have other batteries charged, but that's kind of like battery management 101. You gotta keep that stuff charged. It's a real tight saw, and for my smaller trim work, it works really good. Next thing that we use right here, this DeWalt table saw. This is gonna be my favorite table saw that I have. Again, battery powered, flex volt system. The cutting capacity is variable if you move the fence, so you can move the fence over to this setting here. And then that goes to 20 and a half inches. Overall, this saw is not really for ripping huge sheet goods anyways. It's mostly for just ripping down small pieces of wood or maybe an occasional um, cut off sheet of like, or a cut off of a four by eight sheet. But for, for what we use it for and for what we need, it works really good. And again, a, a, well, one complaint I'll have on this is that it doesn't have the option to be corded because if we're in an area that has electricity and it's running, we really don't need to use the battery. So I feel like they should have included that, but they'll probably upgrade that eventually. Next is gonna be this Milwaukee table saw. Overall, it's a good table saw. I do feel like it's a little bit inferior to the DeWalt just in the, like in the operations of it. And like, like here's a good example. This fence is, it needs some oil because I've been using it, but it's, it's always been tight like that. I don't know if it's just mine, but the fence is not smooth. Whereas this fence, if I release it, it's, I mean, you can see the difference there. I don't know if it got damaged in shipping or what, but it's super tight. And this thing is kind of hard to turn when you're trying to make adjustments on the fly when you need to rip something. Just not really a big deal, but stuff that you do think about. Overall though, the ergonomics, I mean, they're basically the same saw, it looks like to me, but I do prefer that one over there. I think out of all the tools that I've ever shown on my videos, this has been one that has been questioned so much because people are like, where did you get that router table? You know, it's, I can't find it. And I have links in the videos, so they're there, but it's a Summerfeld's router table. It's a guy, he makes his own tools. It's extruded aluminum, biggest router table that I could find. And this is meant to be stationary, built in a cabinet, but I just have it on these saw horses. It's about waist high. And this, these are not permanent for this. I use like a miter saw stand for it. It's a great router table that is big enough for really good precision. Almost too big to take to the job site, but we still manage it somehow. It's pretty heavy. Uh, takes two people basically to lift it up safely. Three and a half horsepower Milwaukee corded router on there. I don't know that they would ever get to the battery technology to make a three and a half horsepower battery powered router that would last more than 10 minutes. But stranger things have happened, so they might get there one day. Here is my DeWalt toolbox. This is actually a welder's box. I bought this from Acme Tool and it works out perfect for storing tools in it. I added some like rubber stripping up here to keep it from rattling around so much because it was kind of annoying. This thing never stays organized. I just throw things in it and I'm not much one for organization. That's just my work style. I just throw things in it, dig around for what I need and there it is. But it's somewhat organized since it's all in here. Job site blower, definitely use this one just to blow off excess dust off of the saw before I put it back in the truck. We try to suck up as much dust as we can with our vacuum system. If you've seen our videos, you know we have the foot pedal vacuum that when we cut a piece of trim or something, it's 
pulling suction from the vacuum as we cut. Obviously it's not gonna get everything. So we, we blow off all the tools when we're done. And then at the end of the day, I'll give myself an air bath to just to get the dust off of me. Pretty basic on this one. There's really nothing to dislike about it. It's a blower, so I, I like it. Uh, right now, nine amp hour battery, and that actually will last a pretty long while. My DeWalt 18 gauge is in the shop. It's at DeWalt factory service. Unfortunately, the driver gave out, but this is the 18 gauge staple, staple gun. And I like this gun a lot. We use it for paneling. And with these guns, I guess one complaint you could have versus pneumatic is that they are kind of heavy, but I'm kind of a smaller guy. So maybe I need to put on some more muscles and not complain about it and being heavy. I don't, how, how do they build the pyramids? They probably weren't, weren't wusses, were they? But <laughs> no, there's an 18 gauge staple gun. No complaints on it. I haven't had it that long. So we'll see what, what comes out with that. Impact, pretty basic. Not much to say on that good tool. This right here, this multi oscillating tool is a game changer. When I need to trim something, like we just had a baseboard job where we had to trim a bunch of little pieces of trim. It was like an older house. So instead of popping the whole trim out that we needed to trim, we just hold up a piece of base and then trim it with this. And it allows you to trim things in place without ripping it out because if it's already installed, obviously it's finished, it's caulked, it's painted. If we're gonna be ripping it out, we're gonna have to clean up the old caulking, re-caulk it, repaint it. But overall, this tool, no complaints on it. I've had this thing for a while, put some good use on it. Next up, DeWalt Jigsaw. Obviously, you can see I'm a pretty big DeWalt fan. DeWalt in Milwaukee, I don't think you can really go wrong with. Bosch, Makita, all that's, it's, it's all good stuff. I'm just familiar with DeWalt in Milwaukee. So for me, these are the brands that I choose to use. But this jigsaw is great. No complaints on it. Put a lot of use in it or on it. And nothing, nothing negative to say on it. It's a jigsaw. Very powerful. And it's no complaints on that thing yet. So we, right here we got a 15 gauge angled finish nailer. Great for setting doors and just any kind of like heavier trim work where you want that thicker gauge nail. This one doesn't get used as much as our 18 gauge, so no driver problems, nothing like that. That 18 gauge, we dogged that one out. So I've mentioned that it was in the shop in a later earlier video and people are like, yeah, you know, DeWalt sucks. No, we put some use on that gun. We, we put some miles on it. So for it to be in the shop, I'm not that upset about it like tens of thousands of nails in a short amount of time. So I'm not by no means upset with that. This drill right here is pretty basic though. It's nothing to even talk about. It's, it's kind of weak actually. It's just a basic drill. It's nothing too crazy. Next thing I'll grab is this flexible angle grinder. And this is a 60 volt, so it's not gonna work with these smaller batteries. Definitely a lot of power in this, has electronic brake. No complaints on any of these tools. I, there's nothing bad to say about this either. Right now I have a flap disc on here. You're probably thinking, what is a trim carpenter doing with an angle grinder? Well, this is very useful for coping, believe it or not. And I have a video showing me trying to cope with this for the first time. I got a phenomenal result and I've been using it on the job site ever since when it makes sense. Cause it doesn't make sense to use this for every kind of coping. But again, no complaints there. Next up, this is our DeWalt. Comes in this case, green line, laser level. And people always ask me, are you sponsored by DeWalt? Is this a DeWalt commercial? No, I, I bought mostly all of this stuff. Milwaukee is the only company that's ever sent me anything. I'm not trying to sit here and sell you guys these tools. I'm just, people ask me what I use. This is what I use, I'm gonna be honest. So I'm gonna shine this right here at Vince in the camera. Don't look at it, Vince. Oh, the batteries are dying. But this, this laser, I mean, it helps, it helps us a lot with being level and plumb. Obviously that's what these lasers are for, but you can see it's crossed. It's, it's just not gonna let me do both lasers since it's dead. And speaking of it being dead, this is a double A powered 
laser. This is not battery powered from the DeWalt platform. So I kind of prefer that for this tool because I didn't want a 12 volt battery and charger to carry around in this box that's already kind of full. But there's the, the green line laser level. And I do recommend for, from what I've seen, just get a green line laser for where we're working. They're more easier to see than the red ones. Uh, I'm not gonna bring my chargers out, but I've got my DeWalt Milwaukee chargers in here. And then I have this Milwaukee jigsaw too. This thing is really good. No complaints on it. Feels nice and tight. Nothing negative to say on this one. It's a jigsaw and it cuts wood really good. So that's every power tool that I own, minus the, my, oh, I'll just grab them. Let's do every power tool I own. That's what we're doing. So here's my corded planer and my pass load gun. We'll just bring all this out. So my pass load gun, which thankfully I was gonna sell that, but I didn't because I've, I've needed it lately. And this Bosch, this is a corded planer. So there's that. And then this has nothing to do with finished carpentry, but we'll bring it out anyways. I don't, this, this is not a power tool. <laughs> I don't know why I brought this. <laughs> These are the sockets for that power tool. I'll just set them there for now. But this thing right here is a beast. This is the Milwaukee Impact. I use this for working on the truck, on vehicles, just my own vehicles. And I use those sockets right there to do it. One thing I like about this, I do my own vehicle maintenance for the most part. There's, you know, stuff I won't tackle because I don't know everything about them or have the tools. But if you go on a road trip and you have one of these, make sure you take it because if you have a tire blowout or something and you're in the middle of nowhere, this thing will save you a lot of time and a lot of stress. This will get it done. So that's it. If you have any questions about any of these tools, I guarantee you will get an answer if you go over and comment on Vince's channel at VCG Construction. He'll answer any question. He knows everything about all of these tools, all the specs off the top of his head. He won't even have to look it up. So go over there and ask him any questions. You, that's not true. Uh, but he knows a lot about tools and he's, he'll be happy to help you answer them. But that's every tool I own. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.